Hi, I'm Linda Tellington Jones, and I am just delighted to be here making this presentation for Equine Affair. And I, I want to thank Equine Affair for inviting me. I'm here in Hawaii. That's why I'm surrounded by flowers in my background. And um, it's just a, a joy for me to be able to share this with you. These four tips we're going to bring you to give you an opportunity to create a different relationship with your horse. So I'm going to hit this screen share here. It just takes me a moment. Yes, to get it up here. So I want to point out this horse is a wonderful horse. I have been working with only a few minutes and this horse reached out and touched me in this way to the side, as you can see, in order to say thanks. And that's something that I find um, I want a horse to enjoy being with me as much as I enjoy being with them. And that's what you can do with the magic of the Tillington method. So just to give you a little background about me, because probably many of you don't know, I've been doing this for <laughs> six decades. I was a competitor for many, many years in three-day eventing, jumping, steeplechasing with the Los Altos hunt and 100 mile endurance riding. And I have been a clinician all over the world, actually, uh, sharing this work. I'm the creator of the Tellington Method, and it's thanks to my amazing sister, Robin Hood, that we have developed this work in a way that you can learn it now online. And, um, and that any person who wants to just learn some of the basics of this work can make a difference with their horse. Um, I have the blessing to have had 22 books in 16 languages, and I was the recipient of the American Riding Instructors uh, Certification Program of a Lifetime Achievement Award and Horsewoman of the Year. And I, I tell you this not because it's an ego thing, but it's an honor to have been able to develop a level of work that anybody can do. The, I've, I've just been blessed to work with many, many Olympic riders and sport riders. But what's amazing about this Tellington method is that any person, whether they're experienced or not, can make a difference with developing this trusting relationship with their horse. And I'm so proud to be a clinician for the We Horse online self-study program that you'll see how to uh, the, how to get it at the end of this presentation. So these are the elements of the Tellington method. First of all, observation. When we look at a horse, we want to see what kind of balance do they have. And when we talk about balance, we're not talking just physical balance, but we're looking at the overall horse from mental and emotional balance. The Tellington Tea Touch is what I'm going to share with you today. That is this collection of circular, basically circular touches. There are a few others, but the primary thing is this one and a quarter circles that you're going to learn today. We have a way of leading horses that we call the dance steps because it gives you the refinement um, that you're able to control the horse in a way that there's a really refined cooperation that is quite different. And um, the playground for higher learning are elements. The labyrinth is one of the basics. And when I first developed that, uh, was first published in a German magazine in 1978. It's in literally <laughs> tens of, of, of actually hundreds of uh, other books who've, from people who have adopted this and find that it's so useful because just putting that horse in the Tellington labyrinth gives them boundaries and a whole other sense of focus and connection to you. And we have special equipment. We have the balance ring, the liberty ring, the uh, promise wrap, the special, and what we call, we use a white dressage whip that we call a wand because if we called it a whip, you wouldn't realize how 
you can use this to make an outline and bring a horse into the into the body so they feel themselves in a new way. And our style of riding is uh, based on the balance seat style of riding that was the uh, foundation for the Gordon Wright brought it and George Morris taught it. It's for our wonderful basic balance seat that our our, our Olympic games are famous for. That's what we taught in my school for many, for, for all the time. And, and the philosophy, I'm going to be talking about that philosophy just in a moment. Now, what does the Tellington Method get? First of all, it comes from a place of honoring the mind and the spirit of horses and they're humans. And it affects the behavior enhances performance, supports well-being, and will deepen your relationship with your horse. Now, hmm, labels block trust. And that's something we hear all the time in the horse world. Oh, that horse is dominant or uh, resistant or he shut down or this, my horse is stubborn or pushy or spooky or disrespectful or unpredictable. These are forms of communication that the horse is attempting with you. And that's what we're looking at is this special communication that comes from the circular T touches, the way we use our bodies, our body language, and what we do with our mind. Now, the basic philosophy of the Tellington Method is, hmm, if you want to change this behavior or communication or or um, performance or the well-being even of your horse or your relationship, you have to first change your mind. And what we mean by that is what you think is what you get. If you think of them with those labels, it's like it's already known out th thanks to the, the gift of quantum science that everything is energy and our thoughts and our beliefs, those are energy. And they actually enhance what we're looking at. So the secret behind this, except we tell everybody so it's not such a secret, um, is the idea that hold the vision of what you would like that horse to be. And the beauty is now we have the techniques of the Tellington method to give you a leg up to help you actually achieve that for yourself. I'm going to be teaching you the basic one and a quarter circles. And actually what we've discovered over the years, because I've been doing this for many, many years, is the, that this one circle and a quarter is um, actually that golden spiral. It's a particular frequency or ratio that is measurable, scientifically measurable. So I want you to know that we're going to get four tips now for creating this trusting relationship and just realize that like how come we have t touch what's the second t in t touch for years everybody thought it was the tellington touch it actually stands for trust and i'm, I'm going to show you four different videos four different of the various L, uh, touches that you can use to make that difference so we'll do them one at a time. So this first one is, is just a very short video on what you can do on the horse, on the body of the horse. I'm going to be showing you the abalone touch, briefly the, just the tips of the fingers, and then the baby orangutan. <laughs> and um, that you might think, wait a minute, why do we have a T-touch named the baby orang? And it's because of, all the different names that we have for these uh, various ways, parts of the hand that you use come from animals that I have worked with. They have a whole other story. Now, here we are with our first video and I'm going to let you hear my words. Easy. So instead of making the circle with the pads of the fingers, I'm going to see if I can bring your head a little lower. 
And I want you to notice this may actually make the circle with the whole hand, which is what we call the abalone. To use the warmth of the whole hand. And I hold her here. Good girl. That's a good girl. And I whisper to her because that no. affects her. For some people, this movement with the flat hand in one circle and a quarter is a little uncomfortable on the wrist. So you can just turn the back of your hand and make the same one and a quarter circles ah, with the back of the fingers. See if you can come down a little bit more. That's a girl. That's nice. And I talk to her yeah. like she... Because when she lowers her head like that, she's, it's trusting. She has to trust in order to do it. And if the head is up and she's holding her breath, she's just not sure what, what we're doing. Easy. That's a girl. You can hear her licking and chewing. I can put the whole hand on and just melt my hand on her. Come down. That's a girl. That's it. And I have to make a circle and a quarter and a slide and a pause. That's a slide. Breathe. And this is a we'll nice, here. slower circle, right? That's calming and for trust. Now, the thing, the reason I'm starting on the neck is because of the tightness of this mare's neck. And you have to realize, um, th this horse saw me the first time possibly five or ten minutes before we took this video. And the just this melting my hand, giving her a sense of herself so that she can actually feel safer in her body. And this, is a, this will create a magical connection with your horse. If you just go over the whole horse like this, just this slow, gentle movement. And think of the T-touch is not a massage. Think of it as a message. That's a wonderful concept that one of our uh, Tellington teachers in South Africa came up with. I love that idea. It's not a massage, it's a message. And it's a message to activate the communication between the cells. And that's like a whole other basis of the work. And the beauty is you don't have to know that. Because anybody can follow the techniques without understanding the philosophy behind it, or the science behind it. But some of you probably would be interested to know. Mm. Another aspect of this. Now, I, I want you to feel this on your own arm. And the way you get a sense of this is just bring your, hold your arm up. Uh, mine is up. You can put yours down, but so you can see it. Now, I put the thumb on the other side. So it's like a, my thumb is a little connector. And I pay attention to my breathing and I just move the tissue gently in and gently is the important thing in one circle and a quarter there's a whole um understanding behind that why one and a quarter if you try it on yourself you'll feel wait a minute if you just like imagine the face of a clock because that activates your left brain your logic and put your fingers at six o'clock toward the ground and move the tissue like in a quarter arc to six to nine, up to 12. Look at my fingers straighten over towards three. They're straight. I curve them at six and I come back to nine. Now, if you prefer the other direction, and you should try both directions because we're all different and do what feels right to you as you're working on your horse. Ah, just this one circle in a quarter. And what we have discovered is that you can release fear or pain in yourself or your horse. And we have many, many veterinarians who recommend this work to their clients because it's besides creating the trust, you can really help your horse in cases of, well, you'll see actually when we go to the next T-Touch, I'll talk more about that. Mm -hmm. You'll see that. Now, the second tip for creating a trusting relationship is the ear T-touch. 
and lowering the head. Again, this is a horse who just met me like a few minutes before. Let's see about your ears. So I turn so I'm a little to the side. And this is ideal that she trusts enough to allow me to bring the head down when I ask. This is a really nice relaxation. Excellent. Now, if if you do this, right, and we'll okay, practice we'll after faster. just, <laughs> you know, a couple of minutes before you get on. Okay, come a little lower, down a little bit. Good girl. Now, I have to pay attention to how I'm standing, that I move my body, because look, if I get stiff, I hold my breath. Doesn't look so good, right? And she feels that. So the rider, the person who's going to be riding, now, I just want to, as you do this, like, I simply use the amount of pressure that the horse likes. I take my left hand on the halter and pull to the left, like, spread my hands apart. And I'm unbending my knees so that you can move easily at any point. And she's a little sensitive on the left ear. Easy. And... What I would have done before this, which isn't shown in this video, just take the forelock and do a nice slide on the forelock. <laughs> and this is something, look where my right hand is on the halter. And by the way, it doesn't work with a rope halter. You really need a nylon or a leather halter for this. Now, what does this ear touch bring to you? And why the head lowering? First of all, teaching the horse to bring the head down. And in this case, we've put what we call a Zephyr lead in the side ring and up to the top ring. And it's really interesting how that encourages a, a, a head to come down. Now, first thing is when you teach your horse, when you stand in front of them and you teach them to give the head in this way and you stand a little bit to the side so you're not blocking and it's safer. And then you just take the ear to the side. In the beginning, maybe you can't touch the ears. You may have to do a slide on the forelock or take the back of your hand and just go over the back of the ear. So then slide out to the side. And what we've discovered with this, unbelievable stories I could tell you of horses who did not, couldn't be caught, for instance, and just catch them up however you can and do these ear slides and you have a different horse. I mean, we have so many cases like this. Now, if you have a horse who's colicking while you're waiting for your vet, or if you can, on the way to the vet, because usually that's the way it is nowadays, boy, if you can be working those ears, you can keep them out of shock and bring a horse out of shock. Same thing for yourself, by the way. All of this work applies to your own ears. Now, pain. You can reduce pain or really release pain with the ear to touch. And you'll affect the pulse and respiration. This has been used for many, many years for endurance riding because you can bring a horse back to normal ranges very quickly. And the beautiful thing, and we know this from hundreds and hundreds of cases, when you bring that pulse and respiration to normal ranges, that's the body regulating itself. It's not like well, I'm doing anything. The body regulates itself because we affect the triple heater meridian around the base of the ear. And that affects digestion and respiration. The energy level, say the horse, you, say you, you're on a long ride or you're at the end of a long horse show day um, or you, you've just like gone out in a trail ride and it's more than your horse is used to. Work, just take a few minutes and work those ears. Do T-touch from the base of the ear out to the tips, to the side, like this movement, and you can up the energy. Now, this is true for you too. You can be really, really tired and wiped out and just put your thumb behind and do a slide down here on the, uh, the, the earlobe in this little valley of the ear, a little higher, be gentle, and up to the top. And you can keep yourself or a person out of shock or bring them out of shock if you have a horse accident and you're waiting for medical help. Again, we have like hundreds of 
case studies of this over the years from many, many, many situations in many countries that people have reported to us. Now, look at the cow's tongue. Mm -hmm. Tip number three. I'm going to just show this to you. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I come from the midpoint and go up across the spine. And I watch to see what he's feeling about this. And he's totally okay, right? Ah. Now watch carefully, because right there he's a little... Oh, yeah. I wasn't looking at that moment. And right there, around the flank area, if your horse moves or doesn't want to be touched there, boy, that's when you want to have your, and they're really resistant to it, that's when you want to check with your vet because it could be from ulcers. And you can do the, relaxes the back muscles, it relieves tight muscles, and it actually helps the suppleness, as you'll see here in a moment. Yeah. Okay, now what I'm going to do, a little oops right here, <laughs> oops, here we go. So it increases the suppleness, builds confidence, and softens tight backs. And I remember a really interesting case, a 12-year-old thoroughbred many, many years ago, came off the track and was really having trouble with coordination. And it was fascinating because they said this horse could not roll. And so we just actually watched how many times, like from the girth area back to the flank, four times, just like it showed here, on each side, and turned the horse loose, and he went out and rolled and rolled and rolled and rolled. Now, if your horse doesn't like this movement, whoa, is skittish or pins the ears or, you know, moves away, you have to be very, like I do a little circle and a little slide, circle and a slide, because they can be really um, sensitive in that area. So you, you use the quality of the connection that the horse likes. And this also deepens the trust that the horse has in you because you learn to listen. What does a horse say? Instead of saying, oh, look, he's like, well, he doesn't like this. Wait a minute. Those ears back or that maybe that like, or the stepping to the side, that's just communication. So listening to the whispers of your horse, and what I mean by that is, hey, the body language, the ears, the eye, you know, the nostril, the tail, stepping to the side, that is all part of bringing you to a deeper relationship with your horse. Now, the tip four, oh, tail to touch. This is, oh my goodness, we have so many amazing experiences with this over the years. Where you feel like and mm -hmm. see what works the best. But I, I started with him because he's so trusting. Mm -hmm. Just coming down the side like this. If the horse doesn't know you, you start from the side. And see, he's licking. <laughs> and now I'm going to do little circles on the tail. And you see, circles. because he trusts, he lifts that really nicely. That's part of the calmness that, mm -hmm. that he has. And she had been doing uh, Now, he liked it when I came down. Some horses clamped their tails. He actually lifted it a little. That's nice. See, there. Now I'm moving it. And this is really good that he trusts enough to move it. Because I want to be able to move this tail to Left affect right. the cranial sacral. Good. There. Good. And I like to stand sideways like this instead of facing the horse. Mm -hmm. It's just a safer because if he moves, I can easily step back. Yeah. If I'm facing him, yeah. Then, yeah. not so good. You <laughs> know. Yes, <laughs> that's it. So now I'm going to give it easy and just hold and very slowly release. Now you come and put your hand up here and feel it. And you'll, because you can't see so much that much is happening. Circle and, mm -hmm. 
And that's good that he's resting, just relaxing. And circle both directions. And and slowly release. That's nice. Now, this is one of the one of the movements that you can do from the Tellington method that is make will make your horse safe because if they're if a, if a horse is afraid and something comes up behind them they have a tendency to clamp the tail and scoot and when you bring awareness to that tail they have a connection through the entire body and what this didn't show here is that most horses when their head is free and we recommend doing all this work in the stall or when they're free so and you'll find, ah, they'll turn the head and look back and say, whoa, that belongs to me. What are you doing back there? It's amazing how that works. Now, what I said, if you don't know the horse or if you're, you're just concerned about, you know, will your horse be okay with this? Start from the side where you're clearly safe and bring the tail out of the tail groove, bring the tail bone out of the tail groove. And then they can't, they can't kick in that case. But always be really keep yourself safe. That's one of our most important things. Now, I also want to mention that cranial sacral fluid that I mentioned. When you're moving the tail gently like this, you're activating the cranial sacral fluid in the spine and you're affecting the part of the brain that controls their emotions. And it's really incredible how you can bring new confidence, new levels of trust with this. Oops, I did another oops. So they're active <laughs> there. So you promote the confidence and just activate that connection through the whole horse and that cranial sacral fluid, which is also activated, by the way, from the ear to touch. Now, this is a demonstration that I did at the uh, Balken Hole stable in Germany, Belly Balken Hole asked me to come and look at a horse that she had in training that was really um, concerned about in the outdoor arena when it would rain and there'd be maybe puddles in hoof, you know someplace or if you just had a dark spot this horse would be spooky so um, i've worked with the balkan hole since 25 years at least i've been to with klaus balkan hole to shows to work on their horses and I just really appreciate the attitude that they have and the way the horses are, are appreciated. So this, and this, I wanna just see this. This, Klaus had just sprayed the sand and it was dark. Now look at what this horse is doing. He's off balance. He's tipping his head to the side. Look at, he's got his weight on the right front foot and off the left front. And if you look at the hind legs, he's like sitting back. <laughs> and um, this has been a problem because you get a lot of rain in Germany. And of course, there are a lot of the time in the indoor arena, but this was a, it was an issue. It was interesting. So we created this Cena and this is from the film stable of Gabrielle Bozell, one of my really good friends. And, oh, I forgot. I have to turn the sound off because it's in German. I have to tell you what's going on. Now there he stops. And the thing is that you see the head going up and down. He can't judge. And the problem is, of course, they tried to push him over that. And what would happen? The horse either rears or spins back. So I say, wait a minute, let's go in the stable. I want to see how is this horse to be groomed? And look, he is not a happy horse. Notice I have attached the side reins, uh, the, 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 the reins to the top of the halter instead of down lower because he couldn't lower his head enough. And when they're in cross ties. Now in this, it had to be that they were kept that way. So, I mean, in, in the cross ties. Now I'm just putting my hand I just want him to feel my hand. And now I'm putting him in something that is we call the taming the tiger. We attach to the right side of the halter, run through a ring, come under the underside of the ring. And then I can just steady him or I can release that so he can really lower his head when he accepts us. And this is 
with the pads of the fingers, I'm doing the clouded leopard touch there. Now I ask him to bring his head down and just see if he can be really quiet. And to do that, I pay attention to my own breathing and notice where my left hand is on the halter. And he's starting to listen here. It was a really, really lovely connection. Now you see a little bit of the hair slides on the forelock. This is really a lovely way to activate that connection through the whole horse and the nostril. This activates the tolerance and you'll get a whole level, other level of cooperation. And with every horse that I work on, I have the honor of working with, it's I realize that whatever their resistance is, it's, it's all I know, it's their communication. That's moving the top of the crest. That's nice. Now he's still, now Pellis Balkan Hole is spraying this area. We come out and watch this horse. Now, he backs up, he tries to see, look at the head coming up and down. He, he can't judge that. And the rider doesn't dare to let him his head free because you know what that's like if a sna uh, in a snaffle, if the horse just spins, you don't have the control. So I decide, wait a minute, we're going to start from the ground. So I set out these two pieces of plastic and I don't take horses over a single piece of plastic. It's way, way too challenging. And I don't get their trust that way. So I make it easier. Now there you see me use the white wand. I tap him and I just want no, a half a step. I'm not, I just want him to listen to me. Notice where my left hand is close to the halter and, and not easy. Good boy. I just want a half step. That's it. No more. Now look how he's waited on trying to sniff it. And I'm giving him space that he can sniff. And you have to be very careful here. He's thinking, yeah, thinking about it. Good. And I use my voice like this. And this is what we call a half wrap. This is a, a way of engaging, connecting the horse from behind. Now we went into the stable yard, which is bricks. And I, my, my, one of my wonderful uh, instructors of the Tellington Method, Susanna Saltzman, on the other side, we put him between the two of us. Look at the head, go up and down, up and down. He's trying to judge. And I ask him to come forward. Yeah, he's very skeptical, wait. I should have waited here a moment longer. I was still a little pressured there. And you see, as soon as he starts to go to the side like that, he's not being dominant or resistant. He's saying, I can't do this. I don't get it. So I take Susanna off the other side because it's not safe to have a person on both sides. And I ask him just these, what we got out in the arena, these half steps. And notice I have a body, a figure eight body wrap on him. And I ask him to go step by step back. I don't run them back. I don't chase them back. I want him to come back from my hand on the lead and a tap from the chest. And I want him to have a chance. No, no, and he starts, he starts like lipping my hand. No, excuse me, no, no, no lipping. It's just because that's a stress signal. And so we put food down on the, we can do it here on the cement and then he walks forward. You notice he took one step to the side, but then she was able to let him go forward. Now, one of the reasons that she dared to allow that longer rein is she had on him what we call a balance rein. It's a rein that we put around the neck and we use like another rein and you just give them a sense of, nah, listen to me, listen. So I'm really grateful for having this video because you have a chance to kind of to see some of the basic things that we do. And look here, I just wanted to show this as I touched him before. See how he's not quite sure, but notice around the neck, this is a, this is a round rein and she can put a little connection on them and say, wait a minute, stay with me, stay with me. Look at his nostril is flared. He's not quite sure. And we just give him time. And that's when I step back and he walked forward. So I hope this gives you some you know, 
and the thoughts were very successful with this and you can be too. Now, this is the heart hug. And um, this is something when you go to your stable, <laughs> so much of the time right, we've got so much going on and we're just like in a rush. <sighs> if you wanna come down, like take a deep breath and <sighs> come down so that you are in a state of what's called heart coherence. And the way we do this by when, when you're stressed and you're in a hurry and you're thinking, oh, um, hmm. <laughs> the limbic system, the part of the brain that controls our emotions is in control. But when we put one hand over the other and you do it lightly cupped or folded back, whatever is comfortable for you, and you imagine the face of the clock on the wall and you put that face of the clock there because when you do that, you activate the left brain because of the numbers that are represented. Numbers activate left brain. Now, when you move the tissue gently, very softly around the face of the clock, we activate the oxytocin from the movement, but we also, because we're imagining that clock coming off the wall, imagination activates the right brain. And our right brain is responsible for our feeling. We need this in this time we're in. It's responsible for our creativity. It's responsible for our compassion and it's, responsible for our intuition, this ability to listen and say, wait a minute, I've practiced these various things. Now, just allow my, follow my fingers. So that's what can help you to create this magical connection. And I see it like heart to heart, cell, my cells to the horse's cell, cell to cell, that communication, and soul to soul. And that's my desire over all these years that each person will find that connection, that special connection with your horse. Now, um, if you are interested, this is one of my 22 books that I did with my wonderful niece, Mandy Pretty, um, Training and Retraining Horses the Tellington Way, starting over with enlightened methods and hand-on hands -on techniques. And it has all the body work, work from the saddle, all the equipment that we use, all of the groundwork, and, um, and many cases that um, of, of various um, horses and the steps that we took to bring them in three days, because these are all in there, the, their sport horse trainings that I did in three days to see the before and after. And you can go to ttouch.com to get my books or, or other, um, see the dates and so forth. Now, We Horse, I'm so proud that We Horse has my collection in their amazing video collection. And um, it's a self-study program that can be found in the health and care category. And you can subscribe to it and have those videos available to you. It's a, I really recommend it. It's a wonderful way. These were just like short little pieces that will help you to gain this special trust with your horse. Or I'd invite you, I do live online interactive trainings. And the next one is seeing your horse with new eyes. Uh, just the week after this will be shown in April, spaces are limited and you can go to our ttouch.com to, to calendar. And when you click through, you'll see our learn.ttouch.com that my amazing sister Robin Hood and my niece Mandy Pretty have put together. So you have a whole collection of possibilities to learn with your horses or your dogs or yourself. So what you can do also is join us. This is our website, ttouch.com or join us on Facebook. And we have a Tellington T Touch community it's a closed community where we have every week our webinars and we have a library that has all of these in the library. It's an amazing collection of information for horses and dogs and humans and other animals. We have Tellington T-Touch World, 
which is um, it has many, many tips on it. It's for open to everybody. And Linda Tellington Jones on the go that is um, hand managed by Shannon Weil, who wrote the amazing book about my school, which was a one year school for riding instructors and trainers. And the name of the book, if you want to hear more about like what's behind all of this, it's called uh, 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 Strike a Long Trot by Shannon Weil. Thank you for the time. I thank this opportunity to be with Equine Affair. And um, just remember to do the heart hugs and make a difference in the world by taking a little time each day to count three blessings in your life and send that positive energy out to the world. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha from Hawaii. <laughs>